Hey everybody, I'm here with You Know Who. Tober seems to have gained a uh, following, so here he is. He's, you want to get up and say hello to everybody? He's a dog cat. He's always with me. He's just always with me, aren't you, buddy? Yeah. I know. I know. Bell's in the other room snoozing. Ooh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to just hit you in the mouth. All right. I waited until today to make this video. But <laughs> of course, immediately start noticing things are... Lights are shifting. Yeah, camera's moving. Yeah, that's it. Let's take a nap. Try and take a nap. Have you ever seen uh, the big cats out in the savannah and stuff in Africa? It's really cool. You know, cats are very headstrong, and they do a lot with their heads. They headbutt. They come up to greet you. They they headbutt you. And I saw this documentary on lions in the savannah. And the cool thing is, like, when some lions from one tribe or a pride would meet another pride, they come up and they, they hit their cheeks against each other, kind of like people high-five. They, and they do it, you know, quite, you know, if they're really happy to see each other, they really kind of high-five each other. See what I mean? Thank you, Cobra. That was, thank you. Thank you, buddy. That helped a lot. Okay, so anyway, oh, come on, please, please leave the camera alone. Uh... Today's first day, I've really kind of gotten my electrolytes, I think, or something. Something very internal back together. I know I went on this trip Sunday before last. So we're talking almost two weeks. But uh, what happened was, I'm keeping an eye on now on one of the lights. It's getting, it's getting, and it's equipment I have. It's very amateur equipment. It's very light, so it's very easy to knock over. Okay, so here's the deal. I went, uh, Sunday before last, I went out on uh, my trip. It was a calamity of sorts. It had good aspects to it and it had bad aspects to it. The good aspects to it were, was a pretty much confirmed home brown. Pretty much confirmed, I'm in the area where home brown is, and as far as I'm concerned, if I'm in the area where home brown is, I'm in this small area. We know that Forrest talks about you're going to go from a big location to a small location. As far as I'm concerned, the big location is you get it where warm water is halt and take it in the canyon down. And as he said, there have been people who have been within a couple hundred feet of the treasure chest but missed it because they went right past seven clues. So the seven clues to me, for me, starts with uh, Homa Brown. I don't even care about counting the clues. Nine clues, 20 clues, 15 clues. Basically, I'm in the Homa Brown area. And I believe, because of what Forrest Fenn has said, that's where i got to kind of rein it in. And i got to say, don't get carried away. Because it would be very easy for me to keep going further and I think that's exactly what people have done. I'm not even say, saying that people have been following my particular solve, but they're in this particular area for a reason, and I understand that, and yet they have somehow missed the treasure chest. So, I don't want to do that. So, it was very good to go out on this trip. It was a very short trip. Um, I went out there, I was only uh, really boots on the ground Monday through Wednesday, but really only Monday and Tuesday. I got in Sunday afternoon, um, checked into my hotel, and drove around the area a little bit. Talked to a couple of people, didn't really learn much. I was out there trying to pin down Homa Brown, uh, because Homa Brown was a little fuzzy for me. I knew it was in the area, but I was a little confused in spite of doing research and uh, stuff and the poem and thrill the chase and all that. I'm still a little confused exactly where it was geographically speaking. 
Um, got up Monday, went and had breakfast, talked to a lot of people, drove around, and of course I did not tell anybody what I was looking for specifically. I mean, I did tell people what I was looking for specifically, but I always framed it in the context of uh, general interest. I never mentioned the hunt, never mentioned the chase, never mentioned obviously Homer Brown. As I said one time, I've done, this is my fifth trip. The only time I've ever had someone acknowledge in the positive the treasure hunt for Forest Fen was when I was in Vernal, Utah last year and an art dealer a Western art prehistoric fossil dealer who had his own shop that I was in looking at stuff was the first guy to say, oh yeah, Forrest Fenn, I've heard of him. He's in trouble, isn't he? He was referring to the people that had, I think someone had just died on the treasure hunt, and he was referring to a newspaper article. But he knew of Forrest Fenn because he was in the art dealer. He sold his own art, Western art, which is pretty good. And then he had a fossil, he sold prehistoric fossil. Hey, Belle! Oh boy, Miss Bell has made the scene. This is rare. Yeah, you don't really like the camera much, do you? Tober's up on the chair, but Bell is Bell is here. Oh, here she. <laughs> She's wafting around, wafting around. Yeah, usually it's to Tober. I believe is in the chair, which has it's turned. Her oh, there she goes her tail. You want to say hi to the people? She's already like no. There's Belle. She's the female. And she, as you can see, is really in her... <laughs> That's really... Her basic attitude is, I don't want to be like, oh, but you're getting so much better. She's still settling down. Anyway, I didn't... I was able to figure out that Homer Brown is indeed in the area. I, it was just wonderful in that I was able to confirm this area is what I thought this area was. Let's put it that way. I wanted to go to a museum because this museum has uh, something in it uh, that I thought was possibly tied to the chase. Possibly not. Couldn't get into the museum because it was closed for the season. I didn't know thing. I didn't know museums closed for the season. So Monday morning, I'm like, really? I can't get in this museum and see this thing I wanted to see that. Anyway, that was kind of different. Um, so anyway, because I was looking for Homer Brown, I was directed by someone to uh, a place near a river. And I went there. And I get out, and I'm, uh, it was public asset access. And there were a couple of fishing trailers there. People were fishing. The uh, trailers were, you know, the boats were gone. So I go walking down this trail, cement trail, asphalt trail. And I see this old guy down the way. He's probably, you know, older than me a little bit. Maybe in his 70s. I don't know what he was. But anyway, he's down the ways. And he has a little dog with him. And I see the dog come. The dog starts running towards me. Now, we're the only two people out there, right? And we're in the woods, except for on this asphalt trail going down the side of this river. So he's cool with it. He's, he's not really paying attention to me. But I see his dog coming out. Of course, I grew up, well, of course, nobody knows. My, my first dog I ever had was a dachshund named uh, Gus. So uh, I'm like, oh, what a cool dog you have. I'm kind of, you know, having to be loud because he's, you know, he's some yards away. I don't know what he is. He's like 30, 40 yards away. Say 30 yards away. I'm not good at distances. And he's kind of like, yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, hey, how you doing, Poochie, Coochie, or whatever. And, you know, I'm putting my hand down so he can sniff it. I'm still kind of walking towards the guy. And I'm like, yeah, hello, my name is Eric. And, um, yeah, I used to have a dachshund. And he's like, he's kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. So I'm thinking, well, this guy's really distracted by something. So finally I get up to him and his dog starts, you know, looking around in the grass or whatever. And, uh, what's that, Bill? So anyway, I get up to him and he goes, uh, do you see it? <laughs> That's what he said, Bill. He said, do you see it? I'm kind of like, no. And he goes, don't you see it? And he's, he's looking out into these trees. So I'm looking into the trees and he goes, they're right in the middle. 
on that middle branch. And I look up, and sure enough, I see this huge bird perched, staring right at us, as far as I can tell, although it was a little distance off, too. He goes, great horn now. And apparently it was a great horn now. So anyway, I took a picture. Um, but for those of us that know the meme of owls in the forest fen hunt, uh, the line, if you've been wise and found the blades, for some searchers has taken on its significance with the owl because, of course, the owl is iconic with being wise. And so there have been various threads of thought that uh, somewhere... Oh my God. How did that happen? Are you kidding me? Wow. Sorry, folks. I have a, uh, a heating cushion with a vibrator in it on... Well, that's not good. Can you hear it? Wow. Well, this thing's got to go then. Anyway, it's on my couch. Sometimes I lay down on it, but I noticed some time ago that it turns itself on sometimes. Wow, it's not even responding. Well, that's great. So it's turned itself on. That's why I look like I did, because it was so friggin'... Suddenly I've got this vibrating cushion next to me going full blazes. Well, that's great. So I just turned off again. Now, I've seen that happen a couple of times when one of the cats gets on it, and that shocks the hell out of them when they can jump on it and suddenly... Okay, well, it turned off. I don't know. I better replace that. I don't want to have a house fire or anything. Anyway, lots of serend lots of coincidental lots of coincidence going on here because I'm trying to explain to you the coincidence of seeing this owl and this guy making a big point of showing me this owl is that for a lot of people some searchers think there could be Something alluding to an owl, whether it's the shape of an owl's face or an owl's body in a, in a rock formation, a cliffside, something where the blaze is that's owl-related. Uh, people have mentioned totem poles uh, with an owl on them. Um, when I was down in Dinosaur Valley, uh, Dinosaur Valley, God help us, Dinosaur Monument, um, Echo Park, I have in my video, I'll put it on here too, a picture of a... Uh, Petroglyphs and pictographs. I, pictographs. I think they're two different things. You have drawings by Indians, and then you have Indians do geometric shapes or shapes with things like they'll take sticks and put holes in things. I think those are pictographs. And then you also have petroglyphs. You have drawings. Anyway, down in Echo Park, there is, in fact, up on this, uh, where the petroglyphs are, pictographs, whatever, there is an owl. So people always thought, well, maybe the chest, when you look at this, this rock side and you see this owl petroglyph below that, if you went down, well, I checked it out. I check it out in my, uh, I check it out in my, uh, video when I'm down there and, and I didn't see the chest. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, of course, that this owl theme runs through the, the treasure hunt for some people. So it was quite cool the very first day, the very morning of the Monday after I'd gotten in the day before, that I'm boots on the ground and I'm talking to people and the very first thing someone says when I'm out in boots on the ground is there's a great horned owl sitting right in front of me. Keeping in mind, I believe this area is where the treasure chest is. A relatively small area, ge geographically speaking, and obviously I haven't pinned it down to the blaze. I haven't pinned it down to the small, small, small area because we know the treasure chest is 10 by 10 by 5. We're not in a little box. Um, but it was just a very cool way to start off. So, I spent the next two days driving around, talking to people a lot, and learning a lot about this area. 
When I first arrived there on Sunday evening, I was not sure where Homer Brown was, except to know it's in the area. Now, when I came home, I was, I know where the Homer Brown. I, I didn't go, well, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that.